Gosh, where, where do we start? So there were 36 press releases uh, and blogs and GTC happened over uh, four days. I'm, I'm going to hit three topics and then, uh, you know, put some macro ideas on there. I had a good talk with uh, CNB Street Signs on uh, on Tuesday night, but I'm going to bring it all all to you. So uh, some of the highlights that, that they brought out, first of all, was NVIDIA DGX Cloud. And uh, this is essentially customers getting access to DGX capability through Azure, Google Cloud, and, and Oracle Cloud. NVIDIA actually recognizes the revenue and it runs uh, NVIDIA's enterprise uh, software stack. Th this, is a, this is a huge one uh, for, for a lot of reasons, uh, primarily because it, it, this is not, let's say, uh, Azure on DGX Cloud. This is DGX Cloud on Azure. And I think that's a big deal because it's being sold by NVIDIANs. Uh, apparently, uh, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong uh, did say, you know, hey, of course, uh, the cloud sales force can, you know, cloud meaning Azure, GCP, and OCI can sell this, uh, but we're going to be recognizing the, the full revenue uh, of it. Uh, call that account control, call that uh, whatever you want. This is a step in vertical integration of the company. Uh, the other element of vertical integration is what is called a uh, NVIDIA AI Foundations. And this is a PaaS play uh, out there. Again, <laughs> the first one is an IaaS play. The second one is a PaaS play, uh, which is uh, offering their services and this one for LLMs, visual language models, and models for drug discovery. Uh, each of these have fancy names. Uh, look them up if uh, uh, in in the show notes if if you want to. One of them called Picasso. I think it is, and Nemo was another one. I think that's the one for drug discovery. But but essentially, these two together uh, signify to me a vertical integration play. And on a call with uh, industry analysts, uh, Jensen uh, talked, he, he really laid it out there. He talked about what the company did in gaming, which was uh, they focused on the, the overall total experience. And then that experience was distributed through uh, a third party. This is what he is bringing to the cloud. His timing is perfect. Um, quite frankly, uh, at scale, there is not another training uh, solution out there. That's just a fact. Not saying that that uh, the companies like Intel uh, and Grok and 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 TenseTorrent and folks like that uh, don't have a chance. It, but that's what's installed right now. Uh, and uh, on the inference side, there's a lot more competition um, uh, out there as uh, as well. But uh, for the sake of enterprise and at scale, it's still an NVIDIA game. The only caveat I'll say is that statistically, most inference is done on a CPU, which uh, benefits Intel. So with all that uh, caveating uh, said, I think this is a big move for them. Uh, you can only make a move like this when you are at the top of your game. And right now, NVIDIA, whether it's hardware, but more specifically, CUDA, software and the de facto standard it is it has uh, become this is where you can uh, pull this and i think you know sometimes you create your own luck sometimes uh, timing uh, is there and we can our debate whether uh, nvidia brought you know generative ais to the table or that was recent it doesn't matter uh, they're at a at a an optimal time to monetarily financially uh, take advantage of this, not just slinging hardware, but now bringing IaaS and past services to the table sold by their direct sales force. Oh, can't hear you, buddy. Oh, I, I, I had to cough, hit the mute button, then I never unmuted it. These are tricky technologies, Pat. It's very hard for me to keep up with this. Yeah, you know what? I think there are um, a number of, of instances uh, in this particular space where there's going to be credit uh, attributed, meaning who founded generative AI models. Uh, NVIDIA has certainly been pioneering. It's been a bit of a one-track mine in its existence, whether that's 
using uh, GPUs for gaming and generating uh, ray tracing capabilities and next generation AI to make gaming experiences better or data center AI. But the theme has not been wrong. And you know, Pat, there's nothing I like more on the 6.5 than doing a victory lab. And so I just want to say that in like August of 2022, when NVIDIA stock had, had fallen to like 130, by the way, it's, it's twice that now. Um, I went on CNBC on Squawk Box and I said, NVIDIA is going to have a huge year because of AI. Yeah. AI is going to be massive. This was before GPT was being discussed publicly. This was before generative was even in the minds of most people. But the trend line was obvious. And the reason I point this out is, you know, the over rotation a little bit, the fact that there is a bit of a, it's a bit of a joke uh, at times, the market cap of the company and the multiple that it gets versus say an Intel, you know, you're talking about 10 versus hundreds. Um, but it is, it, it is the perfect identification of when a company is attached to the right trend lines, how its value can be perceived. This GTC was all about AI. It was all about making sure whether it's you can consume it in the enterprise, uh, in the cloud, it's it's attaching to the hyperscaler, it's attaching to data center, it's making sure that the entire world knows that it is a combination of capabilities that NVIDIA has been steadfast to build over the last several years, hardware, software, frameworks, and an ecosystem is going to be paramount to the development of a vibrant AI capability. And all this generative stuff we hear on largely does run on NVIDIA. It's like 90%. It's a huge percentage of uh, what we're seeing right now. Having said that, I do think there's some vulnerabilities um, that are going to be exposed over the next few years. I think first and foremost is cost is going to become a heavy sensitivity and NVIDIA is the premium product. Now, Pat, you and I have no issue with being the premium product. I think you are the uber premium product. Um, I don't know. But, um, but but in all serious, like we, I appreciate the, the companies that, that want to make the best and charge appropriately for it. But there is an entire ecosystem of startup companies and uh, competitors in the chip space that are going to be coming after NVIDIA. Um, and if they can build software, you know, like the Grok conversation we had last week, where you can compile and move a large language model onto a different piece of hardware without a lot of resistance, you will start to see companies, even the Microsofts and Googles going, how much can we spend to actually deliver all of this generative AI to our customers? So that's gonna be a really interesting inflection point. The second thing is, of course, I think this, the entire GPU and its 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 impact uh, on power consumption and water is going to be really interesting, Pat. You know, you and I uh, have been following, had some interesting recent conversations, one with a company that's actually making it rain. Um, there is a water issue and, and data centers are a, a massive hog of power and GPUs tend to be not the most efficient way to deliver AI. So ASICs are going to become really interesting over the next few years. Uh, so it's going to be kind of, interesting to watch because you're not hearing much from NVIDIA about where they intend to participate in any sort of application specific. Um, and then maybe the final thing, Pat, and this is a little bit more of, of a macro theme that I'm talking about, but that GTC didn't cover, and that's the skilling issue. Have you ever seen a technology in your lifetime that's been as rapidly onset and potentially disruptive to jobs as the last couple of months of generative AI? Now, again, this is not necessarily specific to NVIDIA, but to all the companies, including NVIDIA, that are building the technology that are going to rapidly onset and displace certain categories of workers, what is the uh, responsibility of the industry to help that particular class of worker to find their next thing? And this is something I've talked to executives at Microsoft about, at Google about, AWS about, and NVIDIA, I think, has a role to play. Because frankly, NVIDIA's great innovation has been a catalyst of the speed of all these next generation AI models that we are experiencing. So Pat, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, another big week, NVIDIA got a huge bump, huge run up um, in the market. And that's because the, there's nothing hotter Pat, than, than AI right now. And what did I call it? The gift that keeps giving our show is gonna be the week after week after week of discussions on generative AI. And guess what I don't expect is Unlike the metaverse, which, by the way, NVIDIA is also enabling the actual usable digital twin metaverse. I expect this trend is going to have a staying power that is different than crypto and metaverse and some of the, those of the past.
Company. Yeah, I'd like to talk uh, more in the future about uh, reskilling. Uh, back in the 80s uh, and 90s with some of our uh, international po uh, trading policy, we shipped a lot of manufacturing jobs uh, over overseas uh, to get to get prime terms. And uh, neither the, those companies, the Ford Motor Companies, the GMs of the world, the steel companies did any of the reskilling and the government, you know, didn't come in and help either. Um, while I rarely uh, trust governments to to do the helping hand uh, efficiently, this could have been an area that could have done that. So uh, if we believe that AI will replace jobs as opposed to, you know, let's say market expansion, uh, people will need to find other things to do, right? That That's just kind of a uh, a true statement. So let's keep that uh, let's keep that conversation going, Daniel. Yeah, absolutely, Pat. And I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that because, you know, one of the things for me and for you and I and, and just being in this space is that we do have a certain amount of responsibility as we are the, you know, sort of arbiters of good and bad in tech is thinking about the unintended consequences because there's a lot of great intended consequences. Look, look, I couldn't be more excited about some of the things generative is going to enable me to do in my day in and day out work and yeah. enable for our businesses to do. But I also think about, you know, what about all those agencies that we hire or those contractors that we use to do things that we could potentially not require anymore? Um, what happens to them? You know, if I wrote a book, by the way, it's been translated to Chinese now. This is human machine um, about this. You know, Dude, that was the that was the best uh, pat on the back I have seen. You know, I mean, that's so good. I mean, I love victory laps. Don't get me wrong, but you have the physical, tangible, you know, it's like these ribbons behind me. If I actually won uh, anything behind me, 